Hi, if you're a racket stringer, you probably have a starting clamp. In fact, you might have one of these three. In this video, I'll be comparing these three starting clamps that range from $36 to $250. All right, let's go inside. All right, so before I start this comparison, I did want to talk about each of the clamps that I'll be featuring. And we'll start off with this Yonex starting clamp. It's also known as a Kimoni starting clamp, but they're manufactured by Toyozuki. So they're both the same clamp, but with a different name on it. Now this clamp goes for $250. Uh, and this is not personal. This is not my personal starting clamp. Uh, a friend at IART, Matthew, let me borrow this. And thanks again, Matthew, for letting me use it for this video. And uh, I'll talk more about this clamp later, but uh, yeah, this is definitely the most expensive starting clamp you can get. Then next I have this Babolat. Uh, I featured this in uh, another video uh, about tools of the trade. And this is a starting clamp I've been using for 28 years, I believe. And uh, so they've um, come up with a newer model. You'll typically see it with a red handle and it's a little bit more padded and bulked up a little bit more. And I couldn't find a, we find a website that currently sell these. Uh, it's listed between 60 to $85. And if any of you know a place that you can purchase it from, then uh, yeah, please comment and provide the link because I couldn't find any place that's currently selling it. And then I have a, an alpha clamp. Uh, this is going for about $36. and. Uh, you can get it from New Tech Tennis uh, for that price, and I'll provide the link below. But uh, this is similar to the uh, Babolat clamp, and uh, this is also the clamp that you can get in that toolkit that New Tech Tennis uh, sells. And I also featured this in that other video, Tools of the Trade. Now, there is a fourth clamp that a lot of people use. I don't have it here. It's the uh, Gamma starting clamp, and that typically goes for about $50. And, you can get that from Tennis Warehouse. All right, the strings that I'll be using, I tried to pick out various gauges and types of strings. So uh, this is a discontinued string, but I thought I should use a 18 gauge. This is a polyester, Luxalon Ace. Then I have a 17 gauge uh, print synthetic gut, pretty common string. And then I went to a multi-filament, which is a 16 gauge. Uh, Prince Premier Control. And I have these strings, Prince Premier Touch, but I'll be using a 15 light gauge, not this 16 gauge. And I thought that this would be the closest thing to natural gut. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so let me explain how I'm gonna compare these three starting clamps. I am gonna use them on all four strings. And the first area is how well it holds up under high tension. So I'll be stringing this uh, at 65. And uh, although I typically use the Yusuke method when starting my mains and have the starting clamp on the outside, uh, I thought it would be better for me to compare it when I'm actually starting the crosses. So then that way, uh, the starting clamp is on the string longer. And I typically will string three crosses and then release the starting clamp and then tie off. But uh, there's some of you I know that string all the crosses and then release the starting clamp. So if there's any crushing, and that's the second area, of the string from the starting clamp, I'll be able to measure that. And then the third thing is just the uh, ease of use in different situations. All right, so like I mentioned, I am going to be using this when I start the crosses. And I am going to weave three before I release the starting clamp. And that's when I'm going to take a measurement. Now the way I'm going to do it is I'm, I'm always using the offset tube, so that's going to be placed there. But I made two marks where I'm going to actually place the starting clamp and that's where I'm going to get that um, right there. So what's going to happen too is on the Babolat and the Alpha, I usually place a string between the eyelets. So when I clamp it, it's going to be right at that uh, uh, distance down in the clamp. And uh, once I finish that third cross, I'm gonna remove the offset tube and I have a micrometer. And basically I'm gonna measure it on the outside of the mark and on both sides. And then I'm gonna measure it and find the thinnest uh, part of the string in between those two lines. 
when I do measure the strings, I have to find the thinnest part of the string because if it does smash down, there is going to be a thick and a thin side. So I'll find that thin part and try to get an average of what that is. Before I start up my fourth stringing with the Prince Touch, I want to happily report that none of the stringing clamps slipped, especially on that Luxalon Ace 18 gauge. And remember that's a 65 pounds. So, uh, this last string is going to be interesting because uh, this touch string, if you've never strung it before, it's very sensitive. In fact, it's more sensitive than natural gut in terms of leaving teeth marks. So you really have to make sure you adjust your clamps uh, to a looser setting. And what I find kind of neat about this Yonex uh, starting clamp is that it, it is adjustable. So you can see where I moved the dial to compared to, I'll provide a picture where it was when it started. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I feel like this is going to work based on uh, the limited use that I've had so far with this clamp. So I'll go ahead and uh, do all three clamps and come back to you. Earlier I mentioned that I'll be comparing the three starting clamps using three criteria. And the first one was to see how well it would hold up under high tension. And remember it was at 65 pounds. So I want to happily report that these three starting clamps passed that test. All right, so now we're getting into the second criteria of how I compared these three starting clamps. And it was the amount of how much it smashed down the string, or I'm going to call it deformity, uh, when it was used. So if you take a look at this chart, uh, let's look, look at the four strings first at the top. On the Luxalon Ace 18, uh, you'll notice that I have 1.12 millimeters, and that's what was advertised on the packaging. So for all the strings listed uh, with the millimeter um, measurement, that's what's listed on the packaging. All right, so we're going to start with uh, the first string, the Luxon Ace. And each column, you'll notice that there is, we'll start with uh, the 1.17. That is what I measured outside of the blue marks uh, that I marked onto the uh, string. And the measurement that's right after that is what it was after I took off the starting clamp. And remember, I had to find the thinnest point of that string because there was some deformity going on. So there was definitely some thicker and some thinner areas of the string. So I tried to find the thinnest areas and averaged it out. So you'll notice uh, in the red type on the Yonex clamp, uh, you'll see that it's a uh, negative 0 0.01. So that means that it, there was a differential of that amount. Um, from before and after. And then if you go down to the Babolat clamp, it was 0 0.05 and the Alpha was 0 0.10. So you can see that there is a difference in how much the string was deformed uh, for each of those three starting clamps. Now if we go over to the next string, the Prince Synthetic got 17. Uh, it started off at 1.26 and then uh, again in the red, you'll see the differential. Uh, the Yonex came consistent again at 0 0.01. Uh, the Babolat, there was a little bit less deformity on this um, at 0 0.02 compared to the first string. And the same for the Alpha. So on the synthetic gut, there's not as much of an effect on the use of a starting clamp. All right, our third string is the Prince Premier Control 16. Um, and the differential will go straight there. Uh, again, it's a 0 0.01 for the Yonex clamp. And for the uh, Babolat, it was 0 0.04. So it, it was a little bit more than the previous synthetic gut string. I'm thinking because it's a 16 gauge and it's thicker. So um, it is uh, deforming it a little bit more. And that was the same for the Alpha. It went up to 0 0.05, which is more than uh, the 17 gauge synthetic gut. All right, then finally we have the Prince Premier Touch 15 Lite. Uh, this was an interesting string. Uh, when I used the Yonex clamp, remember I did adjust it to a looser setting and it did hold, so that was good. And it only deformed it by uh, 0 0.02, which is uh, uh, very little compared to uh, 
the Babolat clamp at 0 0.05 and the Alpha at 0 0.09. So you can see that it did go up from the 16 gauge Premier Control. And again, it's due to the, uh, the thickness of the string, I think. In terms of each of the starting clamp, I did want to talk about the, uh, uh, the mark that it left uh, on the string itself. So again, with the Prince Premier Touch, that was a really good test, I felt, with, um, uh, that would be similar to Natural Gut. So uh, I have a picture, and you'll see the three strings that I have there. And on the top, that's the Yonex. Then the second is the Babolat, and the third is the Alpha. But I'll go ahead and... Uh, demonstrate what uh, each of these clamps did. Uh, so let's we'll start off with the Yonex clamp. Now, this is basically like a string clamp made into a starting clamp because it has a nice uh, uh, cam action and it really comes down and it feels like my stringing clamp on my machine. Uh, you'll notice though uh, that there is a gap. I can, you'll see that gap right there. So it doesn't come down flush like how a, uh, these starting clamps are, you know, when it's closed. There is a little bit of a gap. So that does give it some, um, I think that makes it gentler on the string when it comes down on it. Now the uh, Yonex one is actually a width in um, out here. So it does give you a little bit more uh, uh, grip, I think, being a little wider. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp down on this string and it's coming down uh, parallel. So it's not squeezing it like the, uh, the Alpha and the Babolat. Uh, it's coming more down, it's coming down like a parallel jaw pliers. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this uh, Premier Touch string and it's coming down like that. And then I'm gonna release it and you'll be able to see this here, but you can also look at the picture. But if you look really carefully, you'll see that there's three teeth marked in it. The reason why is that inside of the clamp, uh, there is a gap. So that's why you're seeing that um, um, it like that. It's not diamond dust coated. It's some kind of powder coating in the metal itself, but uh, it works really well. And uh, again, I think it's a lot gentler on the string because of the fact of how it's designed and, and the proof in the, the measurements that I made, uh, you know, did confirm that. Now on the Babolat and the Alpha clamp, you know, since they're similar, uh, they're both diamond dust coated on the inside, which is nice. Uh, what I did notice though, uh, is that the Alpha clamp, if you look at it, it's a little bit narrower, so if I put it up like this and I get this side, you'll see how the handle, you can see the red, the Alpha and the Babolat right in the back. Um, so these these clamps are a little bit more narrow. And, you know, of course the spring does matter, but um, because it, it's narrow and because of the springs being in there, um, I think that's partly why this one is so tight. I mean, it has really good grip, but uh, you could see from the numbers that it was smashing down the strings or deforming the strings more than the Babolat one. So I'll go ahead and clamp uh, again the Premier Touch string on this. And you can look at the picture down below too. But um, after I released it, you know, it definitely did leave a white mark right there. Uh, but let's compare it to the Alpha. So I have this one here. And, and again, this was only a few seconds, but, and then we have the alpha one here. So, I mean, I'm looking at these two right here and uh, you tell me if you can tell, well, let me give you a good background. I use my shirt, I guess. Yeah, see if you can tell the difference. Uh, I think this one looks darker and that's because it is deforming it more than the Babolat clamp. So um, that's how they've compared side by side. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, ease of use and uh, I'll demonstrate that on a racket. All right, so the one area I did want to address as far as ease of use uh, was when I got into a situation where I had to use the starting clamp inside of the throat. And this would usually occur when you have a grommet or a racket that has four sets of holes 
in the throat area. And because I used the Yusuke method and the offset tube, uh, there were there was another racket and I can't remember which one, but and it's not this one, but let's say if it was this racket, for instance, and uh, I had to use the offset tube and the uh, clamp. In this case, uh, this wouldn't fit because of the fact that it's it has a, a higher profile. I mean, this one's a lot um, thinner. So I could get in there with the starting, uh, with the Babolat starting clamp, but not with the Yonex one. So, um, but if you're not using the offset tube, then obviously the uh, Yonex can fit right there if you're using the Yusuke method. Now, if you're using the method where you're starting your mains, where you're backing it up with, uh, you're using your string clamp, and then you're backing it up with the starting clamp, then obviously you have a lot of room there. So one of the pros though with the Yonex clamp is because of the fact that there's less deformity, uh, there's less chances of you damaging the string and potentially uh, premature string breakage because when you're using the clamp within the string bed, you know, there is that portion of the string that's not only deformed, but again, potentially you could be damaging it slightly. And that's the reason why I started using the offset tube is when I was clamping on the outside, uh, you know, the starting clamp was definitely deforming the string, but when it had this bend, uh, that's when I was experiencing breakage right there. So maybe this Yonex clamp could be the answer. Uh, and I don't have to use an offset tube, but I would have to do more experimenting with that. But um, yeah, I think this is a, definitely a, a safer clamp to use because of the fact that it's gentler on the string. So you might be wondering which starting clamp did I like the best? Well, let's start with the Alpha. At $36, it's a really good value. And it did hold up to the tension, but because of the fact that it deformed the string the most, um, I don't like the fact that it could actually damage the string and cause premature breakage. But again, for $36, it is a good value. With this Babolat starting clamp, um, you're gonna pay double the price, but uh, this is a clamp I've had for 28 years and using the offset tube and the Yusuke method, uh, you know, I haven't had any issues uh, using this clamp. Now the updated version of this Babolat starting clamp, it, it has red handles and the clamp itself is about an inch in width. So it's a little bit wider and I heard it's a little bit bulkier. There is more padding in the, the handles itself. So I don't know how this compares with the red one, but um, I heard that the blue one is better. Now, as far as this Yonex clamp, uh, I really enjoyed uh, testing this out. And again, thank you, Matthew, for letting me borrow this clamp. Uh, for $250, uh, I feel like uh, uh, I'm having good success with my Babolat clamp. So I'm probably not going to go rush out and buy one. Uh, I did really enjoy the way that uh, uh, it, it has a very nice feel to it. And I like the fact that it doesn't really damage the string. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if I could maybe test it a little bit longer, maybe without the offset tube, and maybe that could be the solution for um, uh, not having to use that, then, um, then yeah, I might consider it. Because I never used the Yonex starting clamp before, I was curious about what some of my colleagues had to say. So I reached out to some of the guys at USRSA and IART to get their feedback and I included it in the video description down below. Thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your clamps play. I'm back. I just had an idea for a sequel video called The Return of the Yonex Starting Clamp, coming out soon.